Welcome back to season two of Top Crop. It is July 15th. We're going to go look at some corn here right before uh, we bring in the airplanes. Uh, we've got some special guests here today. First one, my son Austin. He's a top scout. And then we got Gunny from Ag Explorer and John from Ag Explorer. And then me. All right, so let's go check out some corn. Normally, when we've been as hot and dry that we've been, you'll see a lot of different, you know, what we call like zipper ears, zipper ear. yeah. or different things like that where there's kernels just everywhere. Mm -hmm. They're not in the formation or where it was 20 or 18 and then said, screw this, I'm going down to 16. Right. Um, I'm not seeing a whole lot of that. I mean, that for the amount of heat and water, or the lack of water that we've had, I was really expecting to see some crazy looking yeah. ears. So Corey, when you think about it, walking through here, we walked through what, 48 endros? 76. 76. 76. I was gonna say, my, my gosh, when are you gonna quit planting endros here, Corey? So as we got into it, I'm, I've noticed in like, every stalk out here has got two ears set, right? Consistently. And it, I've pulled back some of the second ear and you got a nice second ear coming. And if we can maintain that and we can drive that year and finish that year off, you've got one heck of a crop coming this year. But you know, it's that early season technology that you run, Corey, that is allowing that to not see that zipper ear, not seeing that stress. You know, your big thing now that you want to manage is you want to, you want to finish pollination strong. You know, it's, it's still pollinating. Um, we're all going to be sticky when we walk out oh, of this yeah, field. I mean, you can right? just see only about half of that ear. Yep. So we still got all that to go. and weather's in our favor now yeah it is with a cold front coming cooler nights and after this we want to prevent that tip back and when you put that onward max on it that's exactly what it's going to do is work on that prevention of tip back and it's going to set those extra two three um, rings around at the end right mm -hmm. on every single ear and that's that's a big piece of it is that late season stress mitigation so delay the onset of early maturity exactly exactly one thing that you do and do well, Corey, is you manage a crop from start to finish, from everything you do from a foundation phase, from combine to planter, into that uh, establishment phase, at, at getting that crop up and getting it going, and that early architecture, which the industry calls vegetative stage. You know, you're putting stress mitigation and technology on to help ear development like that. Things you did from V3 to V5 result in that number of kernels around. And then it, that, that next stage, get into reproduction where we're at today, and then our following stage after this is going to be maturity. And, I, and you're putting the icing on this cake, right? To, to help manage this, this storm that's coming of Mother Nature's uh, curveballs that she's gonna throw at us. So. Uh, you know, I, I always said the best year that we'll have on corn is the years I'm flirting with the drought. Mm -hmm. But I gotta have heat. Mm -hmm. And normally what comes with heat, 90 degree temp temperatures and stuff is normally drought. I just kind of go hand in hand. Yep. You know, we can have water, but normally we have cloudy days like last year, we had plenty of rain. I didn't have sunlight. Yep. And sunlight's a driver of high yield corn. Big time. So this year I've had the sunlight, I've had the heat units. Haven't had the rain, but I've had enough. And we done, I feel like a good enough job of managing it that it doesn't show. It's not showing. One thing though, okay, this is 6618. This is a big, huge plant, all right? Look at it. Does it look like a big, huge plant? Walking out here, I thought I was in that short stature corn. Right. You know. It's not that much taller. So when we was hot and dry for that month and a half, look what it did. You know, we talk about node spacing on beans. Mm -hmm. Look at the node spacing on this corn. Stacked right up, isn't it? It's just stacked. So what does that mean now that we're in the R stages, the reproductive, for this ear? a lot less distance to travel to relocate the nutrients to this ear. That's the whole point behind short stature corn. Mm -hmm. Mother Nature kind of did this for us this year by holding the corn back. It was still growing because it didn't have an option to grow. It didn't want to grow, but we didn't stretch it out. You, you always see those years where you, where you have a bunch of rain and that corn's just really tall. The air placement's up here. You're yanking down on it. Look, that to me is a beautiful corn plant. And I think that is a big driver why you're seeing so many second ears out here because it doesn't have so far to travel 
to relocate the plant's nutrients. I mean, that is almost a picture of maize right there. That's called source to sink movement of nutrients. Late season source to sink movement, pulling out of that, that leaf tissue or out of that stalk. You know, 80% of our potassium gets stored in the stalk. And to drive up in there for yield and test weight, you know, the shorter distance you gotta travel, yeah. right, the more productive you can be. Right, so we love this short corn. And you know, guys, you gotta get out in it to see it. You can't see this from the highway, right? And like you're saying, Corey, that tall corn, you know, when, I, when I'm riding with guys in the fall and we're out shelling corn and you're looking at the tops of crops right at your eye yeah. level in a combine, that's not a good thing. Yeah. I, I'm not a fan of that. I, I like shorter, shorter corn. I know that I can translocate and be more efficient with my late season mobilization of nutrients. But so, you know, we talked about, you know, leaf size mm -hmm. on soybeans, about how they've changed. They've gone to a skinnier leaf and where we used to want it, the width of our hand, now we don't. What about corn? Corn's opposite. Give me the biggest ear leaf. So I pulled the ear leaf here, because honestly, this is the only leaf that matters right now. Now in vegetative state, you can see that all these leaves are actually great size and they're all pointing upward. So sunlight's getting down, it's capturing, it is happy. But just look at that. Look how big of an ear leaf we have here. How long, healthy, and clean. No disease pressure whatsoever. You look here, let's look at the top. Look on the back side. What is that? Looks like maybe a little coming in there on the back side. See it in through the sunlight? Looks like the start of it. Looks like the start of it on the very tippy top. So you see how we're kind of looking in the sunlight, like in translucent? Because if I pull this down, you see how you can't see anything? But if you hold it up to the sun on the back side, what do you see? Starting to see a little spots that almost, I don't want to say what that almost looks like. Because it's so speckled. Yeah, that's tough to guess at this early. Yeah, but there's definitely something trying to come in. Now I would say it could be a foliar burn, but we haven't sprayed this yet. So if after you spray and you come scout and you see that, there's a good chance it could be speckle from nitrogen you had in or something, you know, from that plant, especially when you're spraying in, in the heat of the day, daytime, it will speckle that plant some. But another thing we're gonna look at now, first thing, the roots. See how they're green and not purple? What does that mean that they're green instead of purple? Well. The biggest thing for me is they're still moving sugars. So when they turn purple, that means they're no longer moving sugars. So when they're bright green like that, see how no brace roots are sticking above the ground and just kind of hanging out there, how deeply they're rooted? Well, it didn't have a choice. We were so hot and dry this year, every root had to go look for moisture. And so now, you know what, we're full R1 right now? You'd say, Gunny? Yep, right at. Right at R1. And look at these leaves all the way at the bottom. You're not seeing much sign of deficiencies, are you? Another thing you look out here, you don't see any leaves that have fallen off yet on the ground. I mean, this plant is still cooking from the ground up. And we're already at R1 and we haven't even gave it its big boy shot yet. Mm -hmm. So Corey, what are you putting on that big boy shot? On that big boy shot, we're putting on a lot of macros again. So our foliar, very important. Now we're gonna start focusing, you know, we talked on soybeans, potassium was the big driver. Phosphorus is gonna be our biggest driver now because we want kernel fill. Now we still got potassium coming, but we're heavier on the phosphorus side, nitrogen and sulfur side of this, of this pass. Another thing that we're doing, once again, the sugars, octane. We gotta have that sugar. We gotta have the kelpine for the stress mitigation. And then the big one, something we found out just two years ago, that we've been toying with and we finally found it consistent, onward max, six and a half ounces. And let me tell you the trials that we ran with that, there's a reason why it's going on every single acre of our corn. I, I just, you know. Just consistent. Plant growth hormones. You tell the plant what to do, yeah. where to spend its energy. But I've never had a plant this short and used it. I mean, this is... This is more exciting this year. Yeah, because uh, it doesn't have so far to travel. 
Oh, and a bunch of micronutrients. And that's what, you know, we want, we need to bore on. Got to preach Dan, Dan now, bore on. But, you know, another one here, zinc. I like zinc at this time because zinc is like your quarterback in that plant. It's going to tell all the nutrients where to go, what to do. And I can have a crappy quarterback now, being a Cleveland Browns fan, I'm used to that, because the plant is so short. It really, it's going to be a, a thankless, mindless job to move nutrients in, into this year. And Now, what happens if we start getting rain, which they're calling for? Mm -hmm. And we're supposed to have a high of 78. I feel like we already made it through the hell part. Yeah. You know, and it still looks this good. This has me really excited because I wasn't expecting this at all. I was expecting burnt halfway up, you know, ears crappy, deformed all the way around. We, we've all seen it. You know, if you get 200, 220, hey, rough year, I'll take it, let's go. You know, and the reason why I was coming back with this last pass is mainly because I know how much we can affect a corn crop with test weight. So if I only had a 200 bushel, you know, chance, because mother nature took it away from me, I still could have got 240. Yeah. But now I walk out here and we can change those numbers around by 100 bushel. On a year like what we've had. Yeah. You know, Corey, when you think about it, you go back, so go back 10, 15 years. What's different now than what it was 10, 15 years ago oh my for you? Goodness. Right. Technology, the breeding. Uh, just look at 2012. Mm -hmm. We had hybrids that could not stand this. And then management practice. Nobody managed in 2012 like no. they do today. And that's on any scale. We just didn't know how to manage a corn crop and we didn't have the technology yet to do it. Mm -hmm. That's that technology to actually function inside this crop. Make it work, make it more efficient, drop that stress inside of a plant. You know, these plants are no different than us when we get when we get sick or when we get stressed. We don't function at that capacity we do when we're feeling good and, um, and in a great mood. So plants are no different. And you know, I live my life at, at, by a motto of there are wins and there are learns. It's only a loss if you choose not to learn, Corey. Right? And, and I yep. will tell you, I have learned a lot in my lifetime. And when it comes to crop management, the key word is on management. These days of planting it, spraying it, and forgetting until the combine rolls, you can't do that anymore. You, as a farmer, have way too big of an investment in this crop to let this thing fail. And I have seen some amazing yields in years just like this, where we've had early season stresses, where you think in most of the years, go back 10, 15 years ago, we'd have been like, well, we'll have an average crop at best if Mother Nature allows it to be. Yep. Right? There's so much that we can do to manage through this today. And it's just understanding what you can do. Right? From biostimulants, from amino acids to seaweed compounds to plant growth hormones. And the well, that's what I was just going to say. So, you know, planning, we got time to affect it. Mm -hmm. You know, stress relievers, food, all that good stuff. And then at V5, that's our last time that we can affect it until today. So, we've seen the weather forecast. Now, at the time, you know, we're only seeing five days and 90 degrees and no rain. Yeah. We never know it's going to last for a month and a half. Right. But we was able to get out there and get on and have this corn at full tilt before all that stress came in. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're driving around and we never seen it pineappled. We seen it still sitting there relaxing. And I was a nervous wreck, you know, cause you look at the neighbors and they're all pineappled. You're thinking, how long is this gonna last? How long is this gonna last? And it proved, we, we was able to stay through that stress mitigate. Corey, something you've witnessed, um, whether you realize it or not, and I get this a lot, of talking about if we can reduce stress and keep that plant from rolling up and turning into that pineapple. Some of the, the farmers that are come across from coast to coast are like, well, that's a plant's natural stress response, right? We want that plant to roll up and that way we retain moisture, right? But, you know, honestly, if I can keep that plant laid open and retain that trigger pressure, that water, and that moisture, and not allow it to evaporate, and keep it photosynthesizing, I'm gonna be miles ahead of that guy that just left that, accepted that plant just rolling up. I'm telling you guys, there are technologies today that you can use, you just have to get educated. Right? As humans, as humans, we don't wanna be trained, we wanna be coached, mentored, and educated. Mm -hmm. Right, And that's something as farmers, that's the, the number one most valuable thing we can do is spend our time on its education. No, you're right. You know, we talked about on beans flipping. Yep. You know, on corn, it's spiking. Yep. If you look like a pineapple farmer, don't spray. Why? 
Can't take anything in. Can't take anything in. It's in full de defense mode. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you know, we spend a good amount of money on seed and all these nutrients and all these goodies. You know, we're paying high dollar seed to these companies. Well, I don't want a defensive seed. Give me all she's got. Mm -hmm. You know, so why would I want to have this offensive hybrid, everything I have, and then for it to go in the defense mode and shut down? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's on me. Spot on. That's on me. I'm going to do everything in my power to keep that plant open, living, and going. I want it to be in offensive mode all the time. You got a heck of an opportunity out here, buddy. Mm -hmm. looks this corn looks great. This is short corn then? No. No. I'll say. Okay. No, no, no. I didn't think it was. This is a big boy hybrid. You got it. You got a trained eye, dude. Most people don't catch that. What's that? The stacked. Oh yeah. Oh. Most people do not catch that. Huge. Cut one open. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably super clean and slow. It's my guess. That white right there? Oh yeah. I mean, that's first thing I look at. That is nutrients that is moving through that stalk. That is a healthy. That is live nutrients is what you're looking at. This to me says healthy plant. Yeah. Oh yeah. You smell that though too, like when you. Mm-hmm. It's a healthy, clean white tissue. I mean, that's that's bright white. <laughs> that's you, bright. You mean not. It's bright white. But what you don't want uh, is the sugar. This week. See, See how they're dried. They're yeah. boarded ears. Or then boarded that means the silks have already boarded from them. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So from right here, we're going to have about a three quarter to an inch tip back, yep. mm -hmm. which at these populations we're running, it's, that's typical. What population yeah. you got? 42,000. Oh yeah, yeah. you yeah. have some tip back. 18 around. It's nice here. Hey, bring the 18 back. around. What are the leaves doing? This is another reason why we pick the hybrids that we pick. Mm -hmm. They're upright leaf structures. They're upright, upright leaf structures. If you have that room of high populations, you have to run a up, up light, up, a little you upright need an upright, leaf upright because what we're still being able to get air in yeah. and get air out yeah, at get night. Yeah, release the heat out of the canopy. Yep. About 25 degrees yeah. between inside the canopy from from out, out, outside. But another thing you got to remember too, this corn is not as tall as what we're used to, so this is another benefit. Yep. So normally we'd be more shaded. But we're not. I mean, that corn's only a foot taller than me. I mean, we're talking about seven foot corn instead of nine, you know, eight, nine foot. And that makes a difference, especially down here. Like, I love the way that's stacked. Like, I've been trying to do that with chemicals for years. Their right. nature just said, here, I'll show you how it's done. Because I'm just telling you, you can move nutrients so much faster and at a higher amount with short nodes. Because everything's that much closer to that ear leaf. And, you know, we had a big windstorm last night I told you about. Still standing. You don't see There's nothing down here. here. Tough little burgers. Look how short and stocky they are. Well, let's just hope Mother Nature finishes out, but I think we've got, uh, you we've got, got potential. something. You have real potential here. You got real potential. Did you hear that, King Killer? You're screwed. Say that again? You're screwed, King Killer. You're screwed. Pack it up.